Hey, it's Christine Grace. Welcome back to my channel. Today is another reaction video and today I'm reacting again to one of the greatest of all time. It's Joe Rogan. You guys know I'm a huge fan. So let's get straight into it. Hello. What's up, man? <laughs> We're back. We're back. What's cracking? Same stuff, new day. Yeah, sort of. Um, the war on peptides is going on right now. It is. This is interesting. It's, it, to, to explain it is is going to take a little bit of time, but I'd love to dig into it. because Yeah, I, let's explain it because there is no reason why they would be banning these things other than for their own profit. You got it. You That's get the, the gist of it. Like everything. Only That's, reason. So, there is no danger that these things are causing. There's no public health concern. There's no people dropping dead. But meanwhile, people are dropping dead from the ones that they have sanctioned. Yeah, and so I, I like to tell people what you're seeing is a symptom of a disease. And the same thing we do in healthcare. We don't talk about the symptoms. We don't treat this. We, we, we unfortunately do treat the symptom and not the root cause of the disease. And so to die. Because a sick patient is a returning customer. Diagnose what the real issue is. We've got to dig a little deeper into the history and what's going on there. And uh, it's a pretty insidious disease. And it's spread throughout all of the government. Uh, and that disease is private industry and its influence uh, on the federal government and the decisions they make. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about large language models later and in, in the future of what I think healthcare is. But one of the critiques of large language models is it's only as good as the data you put in. And I would argue that humanity is no different. It is only as good as the data that you put in. And so if the federal government and the FDA is going to allow an open door policy with big pharma, they're going to come to the conclusions and decisions and policies that benefit big pharma. And so if we take a little walk through history, you'll see time and time again how this has happened. So I'm going to jump way back first, okay. if you're good with yes. this. So you go way back. Um, there was a small little company that reached out to the Third Reich and said, hey, we need 150 participants for our clinical trial. The Nazi regime shipped 150 healthy Jewish women to this, uh, this pharmaceutical company to test its products. Literally, within six months, there's letters back to the Third Reich from this pharmaceutical company saying, Thank you so much for your cooperation. The women arrived in great health and working order. Unfortunately, none of them, none of them made it through the initial phases of our trial. They killed 150 women. We kindly request that you send us another 150 women. That little company became Bayer, which is now a mega pharmaceutical company. Holy and I say that shit. because, right, that was the 50s. It would have changed by now. That was forever ago, right? The world's a different place. We would never allow that today. Surely not. Never, right? Come on. Jump forward post-World War II. I talked about this on RFK's podcast. Eisenhower had that. Um, Can I pause, pause yeah. there? You said it was the 50s. It couldn't have been the 50s. Well, the, right? 40s, the 40s, sorry. 40s, okay. And so okay. Eisen, jump forward to, is there a way to turn the volume down on Yeah, this? there's a button or, or knob right there. There we go. There go. So jump forward to uh, Eisenhower's speech, his uh, famous speech about the military-industrial complex. What a lot of people don't realize is there was a second half to that speech where Eisenhower warned the American people about the medical-industrial complex he warned that if we allow private industry to control, monopolize, and profiteer off of health and healthcare, that they will silo innovation, stifle innovation, and capitalize and monetize innovation. And I would argue that's 100% what we've seen, and it's continuing. So, and the reason I want to walk the public through this is because to understand what's going on, you've got to see the history of how it's happened. So, now you jump forward to the 80s, okay? Time and time again, when Big Pharma has had an opportunity to choose left or right, over and over again, they have chose profits over patient outcomes. So, 1980s, uh, Bayer launches a hemophilia drug. They inadvertently contaminate thousands of specimens with HIV. They know that they've contaminated specimens with HIV, this drug with HIV virus. 
what do they do? They have a decision, destroy all of it or ship it to the public anyway. They shipped it into third world countries, Africa and Asian markets, and infected 20,000 people with the HIV virus. What? This is the... If you're shocked by this, honestly, this really shouldn't shock you. There is so much information available now to show you what the real interests of these companies are. And they are profit. And they do not care at what cost that comes. As long as it's not their families, as long as it's not the people they care about, it doesn't mean anything to them. What means something to them is profit, greed. Do you not find it interesting that most of these pharmaceutical companies and vaccination companies, they don't they don't give their children these injections. They don't give their children any of the stuff that they promote, that they sell. Do you not think it's a coincidence that people like Mark Zuckerberg, he doesn't let his own kids on Facebook, but they will roll it out to the masses. People need to wake up. 80s when it was a death sentence. And so I say that to set the groundwork for why would they ban peptides? Look at this from this article. A division of the pharmaceutical company Bayer sold millions of dollars of blood clotting medicine for hemophiliacs, medicine that carried a high risk of transmitting AIDS to Asia and Latin America in the mid-1980s while selling a new, safer product in the West, according to documents obtained by the New York Times. Holy shit. And two, everything I referenced, Jamie, because this was something last time, I, I am going to mention a lot of controversial stuff. So I've listed reference after reference after reference on okay. the Ways to Well website. Anything that I reference will be on there as well. Um, but so jump forward, they infect all these people with HIV. Okay. In the 80s, compounding pharmacies and specialty pharmacies and generic uh, manufacturer. What's sad that even when he says this, even when he gives reference after reference after reference, there will be many people who will just fob this off and say it's conspiracy theory. Why would these companies want to do this? Da, 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 da. Even when the information is staring them right in the face, they still they still won't take it and they still won't wake up. They still can't connect the dots. You know, the truth is only there for the ears that want to listen. And the truth is, not many people have ears that have the ability to truly listen. Jurors attempted to create HIV treatment options that were affordable for third world countries. Because at the time, it was like $14,000 a month for an HIV treatment to keep you alive. Nobody could afford that in those countries. So what happens? Does big pharma in a market they can't sell, in a market they can't touch, in a market where they inadvertently infected, or I would say almost knowingly infected 20,000 people with HIV, they then lobby with the U.S. government file and sue the shit out of all of these companies that were attempting to make cost-effective generics. It caught it up in litigation for three years before finally they bent to the will of the American people and the feedback of, of the public. There was outrage over this. And finally, after three years of litigation, Big Pharma said, basically, screw it. Go ahead and give them the HIV, let them make these HIV meds in these countries that aren't buying our product anyway. And so I just say all this so you know the people we're dealing with, right? And then you jump forward to the opioid crisis, which was predicated by the volume crisis of the, I think that was the 40s or 50s. Uh, and so time and time again. And so how does the FDA come to these conclusions? It's because a majority of their funding comes from private industry and a majority of their discussion, their talk track, their influence, their belief systems and their thought processes are being influenced by these companies. So when we talk about peptides and what what else is happening as a result of this, governments are lobbying with these companies today in specific. There's over 7000 peptides on the market. OK, what peptides didn't get banned? That answers the question in itself. The GLP-1 agonists, insulin, those aren't banned. Those are all patented peptides. These are peptides. These are short chain amino acids found naturally in nature. They were patented for the dosage and delivery mechanism because you cannot patent a, a molecule. You can only patent the delivery mechanism mm -hmm. and the dosage. And so the FDA... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you should definitely go check that video out because there's loads of information in there. If you can go check out the full podcast, if you've got the time, definitely go and do that. I've done a few similar investigations into this topic myself. These institutions, these companies and governments are all behind this. All they care about is profit. So definitely go check out my episodes of Debunking the Lunacy. Um, I've got an episode you can check out here, which looks into contraception and how we're lied to about contraception. You can also click here to see another episode of Debunking 
debunk in the lunacy where I talk about multiple things that the government and these pharmaceutical companies seem to lie to us about our general health. So uh, yeah, if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, definitely go check out the two videos. And if you like this particular video, please do give it a thumbs up on your way out. Leave any thoughts that you have in the comment section below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all of my content. And I will see you very, very soon.